What's up everyone? This is Cole Davis. Welcome to the 44th Transcription Tuesday. It is a Thursday, so technically this is a Transcription Thursday, but who's counting? Today we're talking about Israel Crosby, who I consider to be the great grandmaster of bass lines. To the extent that his bass line on Ahmad Jamal's Poinciana actually influenced James Jamerson's bass line on Marvin Gaye's What's Going On, which is probably one of, if not the most popular electric bass line of all time and certainly of that era. It was influenced by Israel Crosby. Now I'm going to play the greatest upright bass line of all time. <laughs> So my students have heard me talk about this bass line incessantly. This is Israel Crosby's bass line on Ahmad Jamal's But Not For Me, which is from his Live at the Pershing album, which is not only one of my favorite albums all time, but if I were to pick one album that is the seminal bass line album, it would be that one. So I'm gonna break down why this bass line is so great. Let's start with the first bar, shall we? So we have, Now why is that great? Because what he's doing here in the first bar is he's changing the order of notes. This is really important. There's an interview in the New York Times with Ron Carter and he says, all I'm trying to do is find a better order of notes than I did yesterday. And I love that because what Israel Crosby is doing here is he's taking a common phrase in the baseline language and he's changing the order of notes. Normally you would start a chorus like this. Very common leg. One, three, six, five. But instead, what he does here is he goes one, six, three, five. So if you're listening at home, you can do this in your own bass lines. Think about a lick that you play all the time. On an F blues, I play this lick all the time. First bar. walk down, right? But let's say I want to change the order of notes. There's an option. I could also do exactly how Israel Crosby starts his bass line. One, six, three, it is so simple, yet so effective. All he's doing is changing the order of notes. The next thing he plays is Now why is that important? Why is that so interesting? He is ending on the root of the next bar. I'm gonna say that again. He's ending on the root of the next bar. So he's creating a cadence, which is so important to good bass lines, but he's doing it before the next bar happens. This is something I love to do in my bass lines. So if I'm playing in F blues, I would play something like this. So I'm creating a cadence by playing that F before it happens. That way the next bar is fresh. So I'm doing That's an example of what he's doing here. He's playing this which is the third and the seventh of a G7, which is the chord. So he's doing. I'll do 
it up here so it's easier to hear. It's a very classical, almost Bachian kind of approach to bass lines, which, of course, if you study more Israel Crosby, you'll realize that he got most of his stuff from Johann Sebastian Bach because there actually wasn't a bass player that played like this before him, except for Bach. So that's where he's coming from, and you can hear it in these bass lines. The rest of this bass line is available on my Patreon at www.patreon.com slash Music. Folks, we have the number one upright bass page on all of Patreon. I cannot believe it. I am so grateful to you all. And we've gone very far in the last year when we started with only 32 subscribers. Now we're at over 700 subscribers. If you subscribe to me on Patreon, you get 50% off all of my books and all of my courses. I have over 10 hours of courses on the Patreon. Many of you don't know this. I don't just do courses on YouTube. I do full length four hour courses, which are available for very little actually. I'm giving it away pretty much. I'm giving you my knowledge on the Patreon for very little. You also get the Monday morning warm up where I warm up with you every Monday and all the episodes are archived on the Patreon. You get the weekly tune in where I learn a tune with you every Friday. So you got the Monday morning warm up and you got the weekly tune in Monday and Friday. And if you miss it, the episodes are archived on the Patreon. So subscribe today. You will not regret it. www.patreon.com slash Cole Davis music. Once again, this is what he's doing. So now he's setting up the next two bars. What's he doing there? So he's creating interest by changing the register. He's in this register. Cadence, moving on. <laughs> Amazing. And in this next bar, this fifth bar, he does the cadence on beat four again. He plays. Even though now he's playing it in the root of the chord, as opposed to playing the root of the next chord, which is what he did in bar two. He's playing the root of this chord as a cadence, so that way he can move on. You don't always have to create cadence on beat one. Sometimes the most effective cadence is on beat four. Israel Crosby 100% got this from New Orleans music. He was a master of that kind of music, even though he grew up in Chicago. He was a master of playing that style. And you can hear him play with Benny Goodman, and you can really hear his understanding of the two beat. That's where this comes from, this concept of playing a cadence on beat four. You'll hear a lot of tuba parts, right? That cadence is on beat four, it's not on beat one. So a lot of the time we put the cadence on beat one, which is nice, but it can also go on beat four. So one thing he's doing I could talk about those eight bars all day long, but we have to move on. <laughs> One thing he's doing here, and he does this a lot in many of his bass lines, is he's using the six and he's using the nine. So, that's the nine. Then skip a bar. Don't make a sex joke. We're, we're better than that. If that's what you're thinking, we're, we're mature musicians here, okay? There's no jokes in this music. So what he's doing is he's using a six and a nine in this bar. That's brilliant, right? I mean, that's amazing. The rest of this bass line is available on my Patreon at www 
www.patreon.com slash Cole Davis Music. Okay, I'm gonna move on from But Not For Me because if I continue, this is gonna be a 45 minute YouTube video. Here's what we're gonna play next. It's You or No One, which is kind of an obscure tune, but this bass line will blow your freaking mind. Another total genius bass line. Let's start from the beginning. What's interesting about this is it actually starts in the most simple way. One, three, five, seven. That's it. Then he does this again using the nine. So what he's doing here, once again, is changing the order of notes. Someone might want to play. Or something like that. He's doing. Changing the order of notes to three, five, nine, one. Once again, he's creating a cadence by playing the root of the chord on beat four instead of beat one. He's outlining the chord by playing the other notes and then he's playing that cadence on beat one. I'm sure Ahmad Jamal loved that because this band was so inside in New Orleans, especially Vernel Fournier, who was from New Orleans. And he was a master of that kind of playing as well. You know they love this stuff because this is so obviously coming from that kind of music. And the cadence on beat four is not only rhythmically powerful, it's harmonically powerful too, because it sets up the next bar. That comes straight from classical music. That is a classical sounding bass line. Then in this next part, he does such a cool thing with two bars of one chord. Two bars of one chord is a huge challenge for every bass player. When I talk to other bass players in New York, they often say that the hardest thing about playing standards is when you have two bars of the same chord. Because you play a lick, you're like... And then you're like, wait, what do I do for this next bar? Do I play the same lick again? <laughs> the next bar is always the challenge. But let's check out what he does here in this next bar. How clever is that, right? He doesn't even play an A flat major seven. This is not an A flat major seven. I don't know what that is, but it flows perfectly into the A flat major seven. So it's kind of ambiguous, right? He's not going, he's not playing something obvious. He's not playing like an obvious C seven and then going to A flat major seven. He's playing something ambiguous to set up another cadence. It's in the chord. It's not that it's not in the chord. It's just that it's not 100% clear what chord it is. And he does that so that way the next bar really sets up the C sharp minor 7. That's perfect, because then that second bar has a ton of weight. If he did this, that's kind of boring, right? I'll play him back to back.
obviously the second one is better. But in order to come up with that, you have to really understand how to use those phrases to create a cadence. Because if it doesn't lead to a cadence, then there's no point, right? If it went, right? If it just went to a completely different place, it would be like, okay, but his beat four cadences are really strong and his beat one cadences are really strong. Then he does it again, but this time on beat four. He's creating a strong cadence here as a jumping off point to the next bar. Then he does it again. So that phrase right there, those four bars. Perfect. This is the art of creating cadence. I came up singing classical music in New York. So when I hear this kind of cadence, it is familiar to me. If you didn't grow up with classical music, it might not be as familiar to you. But not to worry, you can practice this in your bass line. You can take an F blues or B flat blues and practice this idea. making sure to play the roots on beat four to create a cadence. Because beat four wraps up the phrase. Or beat one can be a strong cadence. If I do this, I'll do F blues. Because I started here, flat was really, really strong because this beat, uh, bar three, kind of ambiguous. What am I doing? Then it's like, okay, we're home. So this occurs to me naturally because I've been doing it for a while. And I have good ears. I understand a little bit of classical music. Been around it pretty much my whole life. So I can kind of do this in real time and I can think about it on gigs to the extent that it can inform my improvised bass lines. But a good way to get to this level pretty quickly is to write it out. If you start writing out the bass lines and take the pressure off yourself to come up with the stuff in real time, write out a bass line and think beat four cadence. Create tension, create some release, beat four cadence. Create some tension, make it a little ambiguous, you don't know where we're going, strong beat one cadence. Write out bass lines. I know I'm getting pretty advanced here, but if you can write out bass lines with this information in mind and you can incorporate it in your own bass lines, you will start to love your playing. And it doesn't take that much to be able to do this. I'm doing the work for you because I'm explaining these genius bass lines to you. So that way you can internalize. If you got any questions about it, you know where to go. DM me on Patreon, www.patreon.com slash Cole Davis Music. Okay, I've got one more bass line for you. This is a very long video because I can talk about Israel Crosby for hours. All of my students know this. I'm obsessed with his bass lines. He really was a genius of bass lines. So much so that the great James Jamerson was influenced by him. That's pretty crazy. James Jamerson, the most important architect of electric bass lines, was influenced by him. That's nuts. Ray Brown, Ron Carter, Percy Heath, all the great bass players loved and respected Israel Crosby. He was really the first one to play bass like this. He was born in 1919. I'm going to check Wikipedia to make sure I'm getting that right. Yeah, January 19th, 1919. 
is when he was born. Much earlier than a lot of the great bass players that we listened to. But make no mistake, he was probably the most influential upright bass player in terms of bass lines. All the great bass players respected and studied him. This bass line is crazy. This is a hot 16. I'm going to do that again and hopefully play with better intonation this time. Just unbelievable. What a genius bass line. Here's one thing he's doing that I think is insanely cool. So in bars three and four of this bass line, he's doing this. So that's kind of bebop-ish in a way with the approach tones. So He's starting on the major seventh of a C major seven because of its relationship to the root. So that is totally legit. Instead of one, three, five, seven, he's doing seven, one, three, five. Again, changing the order of notes. A very important thing to master if you're a jazz bass player at any level. You don't have, I take that back. You don't have to master it. You don't have to master. I haven't mastered it. But it's a very important thing to be aware of. So if I'm doing this, it gives the bass line another dimension rather than just, or, you know, gives it something else. So he does that again in the next bar, this time starting on a different note. He's doing nine to three. similar concept of cadencing here in the eighth bar of this phrase where he goes skip that this is also really interesting here in the fifth bar I mean that is a melody He's separating the intervals in such a way that it actually creates a melody. I mean, if that were like the theme to a classical symphony, if that were like the theme to like a Prokofiev symphony or something, I would be like, wow, that's an amazing melody. And this is just this dude's bass line. <laughs> like, that's insane. Just these two bars and how it ends up at that B flat seven. That's just amazing, man. That, there's, there's nothing like that. A bass line that is functional, clear, logical, and that elegant and melodic. I rest my case. Israel Crosby is the undisputed goat of bass lines, and I challenge you to find a bass player that disagrees, and I would love to hear why. Thank you so much for watching and appreciating great bass lines. It means a lot to me to have so many people supporting my work now, because this was not the case a year ago, when I had 32 Patreon subscribers and a couple thousand followers on Instagram, and it really is an honor and it really does mean a lot to me. And I hope that we can keep it going and keep building this thing that we're creating on Patreon and keep spreading joy and love through great upright bass playing. CDF.